Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today, I'm excited to announce we have another player in the ever advancing AI text to video space. This company is called Pika Labs and they don't seemingly have any affiliation with prior AI companies we've covered here before. So dissimilar from the open source Zeroscope, Runway ML, or projects from Facebook and Midjourney. Initially, I saw these videos on Twitter late last night, and I think sometime around July 3rd, Pika Labs actually started posting demos of what their videos look like. And initially, I thought they were very fine-tuned videos from Runway ML, or maybe um, highly, highly cherry-picked videos from Zeroscope. And what really caught my eye is how good the motion mapping in all these videos is. If you've watched anything created by Zeroscope or Runway, you'll know that generally the only thing moving in these videos is the camera itself, and occasionally a subject will be changing. And occasionally, you know, a subject may be spinning around or morphing in sort of a blob-like way. Oddly enough, I think Zeroscope previously had the best example of understanding how different subjects should move. The Reef videos that it seems to favor, I think really showcase this. You know, the fact that the model could understand a eel will sort of slither and a, an octopus looking character might kind of slither and blob its way around. And it really understood how fish and sort of deep sea and deep sea creatures might move, which was kind of interesting. And it, you know, not, not that Runway ML Gen 1 and Gen 2 struggled with this, but um, other than trees moving and sort of static objects bending, they did seem to have limitations. And Pika Labs appears to have done something that helps them understand in a multimodal sense um, how multiple characters can, can move, and while also combining that with a incredible sense of depth of field sort of tilt shift and a number of other character centric features that, that make these videos look much, much more realistic. So this is what their landing page looks like. It's very, very bare. Right now you can apply to join the beta. Hopefully we'll have beta access within the next few days. And they've shared a small number of demos, but right now Twitter is really the best place to look for these. It seems like they've been favoring sort of a sci-fi and or architectural style for their videos. Most of what I've seen has been in that sort of realm. And you know, they have, they have three prompts here that seem kind of interesting. What I like is they appear to be very focused on the technology, not necessarily the tool itself for now. And it'll be curious to see what kind of interface they've selected for this, whether or not it's just an API you have to sit behind, or if it's more of a bare bones UI. Uh, I'm actually not sure if they even have that much of a Discord presence since there are no links to any Discord here. And curiously enough, their Twitter is also pretty bare bones. They have a link to pika.art and you can DM them if you want early access. And what I find interesting is most of the people who have been creating kind of cool stuff on Twitter so far seem to say that they're passing uh, mid-journey images in and than getting interesting results on the outset. And what's also really cool is a lot of creators are actually using Pika Labs along with Zeroscope XL to upscale, which is really interesting. So it, what I think is kind of cool is Zeroscope XL is now being shown to actually have capabilities outside of just upscaling from smaller versions of Zeroscope. And curiously, like no one really used Zeroscope with Runway ML, and I don't really know why that is, but yeah, right now it looks like text to video with Pika Labs and Zeroscope is a total win. And let me show you a few of my favorite generations that I think show the complexity of motion in their model. And it's interesting because if you think about where Meta came from in some of their text to video models, and more importantly, their multimodal models, Meta's image bind AI, which was their multimodal, what they call a holistic AI model, which could do you know, audio to video and a number of other things. Uh, I think a lot of people overlooked the value of this model actually having uh, what they call IMU presence as one of the modes of input to that model. And for those of you who don't know, IMU is basically, basically it means tracking motion. It's really important for robotics and for guiding, and I guess for turning like instruction into physical motion for like robotic arms or you know, a bipedal kind of platform. This is something that um, Boston Dynamics has absolutely mastered. I would not be surprised if Pika Labs had some of this as their training inputs. 
Because for instance, you know, if you have a lot of inputs that are simply looking at different kinds of subjects and how they move in very distinct ways with segmentation, that is how you improve sort of the motion clarity of these models. So it'll be very interesting to see if we get more information about this closed source model. You know, Zeroscope was a very interesting departure from prior tools we'd seen because it was totally open source and you could rip it apart wherever you wanted and see exactly what was going on generally. And for Pico Labs, it's right now kind of a black box. So we'll see how well it gets. This, the use by artists seems to be very, very interesting. And let me show you a few of my favorite excerpts here. So here we have sort of this forest scene with these metallic robots walking throughout. And as you can tell, the, the robot motion looks pretty reasonable. Their articulated joints seem to work like they would work. Of course, the environment itself is moving in kind of a weird way with depth of field, but it's still very realistic. And just like you would see in the latest version of Runway ML Gen 2, the occlusion of light through the trees and through the leaves and how the color of the leaves changes is all kind of how you'd think it would be. It's a little stuttery, and it, obviously this video is only two seconds long, but it's a really great starting point. There are also some more abstract kind of spooky videos. So this is one by someone named Ronnie Khalil, and they're an artist on Twitter, and this is sort of a impressionist painting that appears to be waves of water that eventually turns into this large eye. And uh, I think it's cool because you can never quite tell what this is. And in my opinion, when you let these text-to-video models really have greater creativity and, and less constraints, I think what they produce generally is more interesting and can be way more wild than you'd think, um, you know, some of these prompts could make. And this next one is sort of this weird desktop scene. So it's, uh, you have sort of this jar and these desks and more robots. I don't know why robots are a recurring theme with Pika Labs. It's kind of funny because with Zeroscope, all the videos we initially saw were of deep sea creatures and reef fish. But what I like to see here is the complexity of each environment is quite high. You have these weird um, kind of metallic elements. You have these bioluminescent uh, or sort of like EL wire looking LED pieces that are still refracting and doing a lot of complex stuff with the environment, not just with the subject itself. Of course, with a lot of these models, as you know, um, when they have a really shallow depth of field, that is kind of how they cheat to make things look better and to save work and also just to get your eyes to focus somewhere very specific. However, this kind of complexity happening with this amount of motion um, is pretty unprecedented. And I've messed around with Runway ML Gen 2 before, and to get motion to look this good and to have camera movement that's this easy to dictate is not easy and takes dozens of tries to get right. And this model appears to nail it pretty quickly. And this video is from a creator on Twitter called Sundog. And lastly, I wanna look at this really interesting bit that's actually, it's like a clock scene. And it might seem weird and kind of muddy to you, but to me, what's interesting is we have three different subjects converging each with their own motion. And to prompt this, I don't know what you would prompt to say, you know, you, you want this kind of steampunk looking clock with a few more dials and then a subject in the foreground out of focus coming into frame, along with all of it being made from this sort of gold metallic, uh, almost film grain looking material. And what it, what's really cool is each of the dials is spinning counterclockwise. You have two dials, so you have an hour and a minute hand, the clock itself, the numbers are kind of hard to read, but you can tell the top is a 12 and that generally speaking, the numbers are equally distributed in a way that would look like a clock. To the, you know, so basically when I looked at this, I thought, oh, that's a clock. And I have no clue what the subject kind of moving in from the right is supposed to be. I think this is another one of those robot characters. The coherence here, although things are a little bit muddy, is so far superior uh, in terms of framing and in terms of motion and just, how it feels to watch, that uh, I'm really excited, again, to see what comes from Pika Labs and their tooling that, again, is right now, uh, it's hard to say it's better than all of them, but it's good at a few things that prior text-to-video models really struggled with, which I think is very interesting and, uh, again, will be fun to watch as it gets better. So, as always, if you like this video, um, please consider liking and subscribing. 
We're doing more um, 4090 content very soon. And I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.